Hello everybody, Carl Larson here with another great tutorial for you. Today I'll be showing you how to approach a 2.5D rig removal shot using Photoshop, After Effects, and the Mocha AE Tracker, which is now included with every copy of After Effects CS4. Now it's not like there aren't a lot of great tutorials on the Mocha Tracker already, but I think nearly all of them involve some type of graphic insertion into a cell phone, TV, or something along those lines. So my hope in this tutorial is to break the misconception that Mocha is a one-trick screen replacement tool when in fact you may want to use it for just about any tracking job, especially the ones involving scaling, rotation, or perspective movements. But before we dive into it, let me give you a few quick pieces of background. If you haven't already seen it, or want some further instruction on the fundamentals of rig removal, you may want to look up Steve Wright's article, Invisible Effects, in the Creative Cow Library, which addresses many of the common aspects of this topic. Second, if you're not using CS4 yet, Maltanen has a great tutorial here on Creative Cow covering how to approach a similar shot using After Effects built-in tracking tools, which may be more applicable to your workflow until you upgrade. And finally, I don't have a clue on how to pronounce the name of this new tracker. So far, I've heard every American call it the Mocha Tracker. You know, like Starbucks, which would make a lot of sense but they call it the Maka Tracker on some of the promo videos on the Imagineer Systems website, so I don't know. Maybe it's the European accent. Maybe that's what they want the world to call it. Either way, I'm going to attempt to call it the Mocha Tracker throughout this tutorial in hopes that somebody will send me some aged Sumatra as a token of their appreciation. Well, not really, but okay, I probably wouldn't send it back if you did. Anyway, with all that behind us, let's open up the shot we'll be working on today. It's the final clip from a quick project I did to promo a series on death and dying. The only problem is that when the camera completed its move, we ended up with the light stand in the frame, and there really wasn't anything we could do about it. I mean, it's not like we had a bunch of dead fish sitting around, and we couldn't make the bathroom any bigger, so we just sort of went for it. But no problem, we can fix it in After Effects, right? Well, maybe. The area we want to track is obscured at the beginning. The light stand moves into the frame, and the camera jibs up for the majority of the clip. So to be perfectly honest, this isn't something particularly well suited to After Effects built-in tracker. And even if we did get a relatively solid track using it, we might not get the result we're looking for, since the built-in tracker only accounts for position, scale, and rotation, but not skew or perspective. So here's how I'm going to approach this project. First, we need to make ourselves a clean plate from the original file. Next, we need to generate our tracking data in Mocha AE. Finally, we'll lock the footage and the clean plate together using our tracking data in After Effects. So here we go. Take the footage, drop it on the Make New Comp button, Go to the end of the composition, and go Composition, Save Frame As, File. Choose Photoshop Format, and click Render. Now there are a number of ways to clean up the frame and paint out the light stand here in Photoshop, but since the floor in the image isn't directly facing the camera, I'll remove it using the Vanishing Point filter, since it was designed specifically to handle cloning along a perspective. So Filter, Vanishing Point. Now in the Vanishing Point interface, the first thing we want to do is create a grid, so click on the Create New Grid button, Create Plane Tool, and we can just click along the tiles here and just define a simple grid. Next we can grab the edges and extend it out to be something a little greater than the area that we actually want to clone out. So you can just adjust on the corners here to make sure that everything lines up. We'll just extend this corner out, zoom out a little bit, grab the bottom. Now along this corner, this edge here, it looks like it doesn't quite line up. And we'll call that good. The next thing we need to do is grab the Clone Stamp tool over here. And the difference is that in the Vanishing Point filter, it doesn't just clone, it clones along a perspective. If I option click to define my clone source over here, it will scale it appropriately along the perspective of the image that's now defined within our grid. So I can just click and drag and paint out that light stand. That looks pretty good there. I'm going to do one more click, option click here. Start on this grid here. That looks great. I'll click OK to accept the results, and we'll save the file. Now here in Mocha, the first thing we want to do is create a new project. So we'll click on the New Project button, and navigate to the file that we want to track. All of the default settings in here should be fine for you. The only thing that you really need to pay attention to is your frames per second. If you don't choose the proper frames per second in Mocha, your tracking data and your footage won't line up when we go back to After Effects. So I'm going to set that 24, and click Finish. Now the first thing we'll do here in Mocha is grab the black bar, that's the playhead, and we'll move to a point where we want to begin our tracking session. We'll move it to about frame 51, and we'll click on the set in point button. There we are. Now we can scrub to the end of our timeline and begin our tracking session. So unlike After Effects, we don't have to define two points to calculate the scale or rotation. Instead, Mocha calculates the parameters using planar regions. 
hence the name Mocha AE Planar Tracker. So in the toolbar, let's grab one of our spline tools. It doesn't matter which one, the X spline or the B spline, but most of the demos use X spline and I've gotten used to it, so we'll use that. Click in a circular pattern to define our tracking region. You want to enclose a region of the frame that's all within the same plane of the shot. It doesn't have to be exact, but as a general rule, the bigger you can make the area, the better. Once you've defined all your points, right click to close your tracking region. Now just click the track backwards button and let Mocha do its thing. So now that the track is done, scrubbing through the frame, we can see that our tracking plane is just locked to the floor. That looks great. To check its accuracy, we can go over to the Layer Properties palette and choose Insert Logo. And now as we scrub through, we can see if that logo attaches to the floor. Now it's not perfectly lined up with the floor yet, so we may want to go and turn on our surface and grid controls just to be sure that everything lines up exactly as we hope it would. And we'll scrub back and forth goes out of the frame, boom, there it pops on. We'll fade that in once we're in After Effects. One thing to keep in mind with the surface or grid controls, we'll turn those on here. So that's just another way we can check that our floor or our, our track is lining up with the area that we want to track, is that the relative previews of the output based on the absolute tracking information of the shot. So this means that you can play with these as much as you want without disrupting your actual tracking data while having the ability to freely position where the corners of your corner pin will end up in your scene. This is a hugely powerful feature of the software, but it's also one of the most potentially confusing when we go back to export the information in After Effects. It may seem backwards at first, but if we take the track just the way it is with the grid lined up on the floor and everything looking great, we won't get results that are useful to us once we return to After Effects. Instead of trying to explain this verbally, let's take the data just as it is and see what happens. So in the Track tab, click on the Export Tracking Data button and choose After Effects CS4 Corner Pin Tracking Data from the pull-down. Click Copy to Clipboard, and let's flip back into After Effects. Moving to frame 51, we'll paste the data onto the clean plate layer and see what happens. As you can see, we get a perfect track, but it's constrained to the region of our floor that we use to define our grid. Which would be perfect if we were inserting a logo on the floor, but that's not what we're trying to achieve. So clicking undo a couple times, let's go back to Mocha and fix our data to make everything line up the way we'd expect it to. So what we want to do is at the very end of our clip, go over to this palette here and click on Align Surface. This will align the surface of our grid exactly with the boundaries of our footage, yielding a track that will match perfectly with the full frame clean plate that we generated earlier. Now just to clarify, if we had used a different frame in our clip as the basis of our clean plate, we would want to align the surface at that point in time. There's nothing magical about the last frame. It just happened to be the one that made the most sense for us to use in this particular shot. Clicking on Export Tracking Data again, choosing Corner Pin and Copy, let's go back into After Effects and paste our data back on the clean plate at frame 51. And now with that simple modification, everything lines up perfectly. Now, a couple things that we need to do to clean up. Obviously, this just, bang, pops on right there, and we don't want to see the whole frame. We only want to see the corner. So let's again go to the end of the composition, Select our layer, and we'll define a mask real quick. So we'll grab the pen tool and just click a path to define the area that we want to keep. And now it's essentially parented into our scene. So that looks really, really great. We can just toggle that on and off to see how it's changing. To make our mask sit better in the scene, let's add a hint of a feather to it, maybe five pixels or so. So pressing MM on the keyboard to reveal the mask properties, let's turn the feather value up to five pixels. Great. We'll also want to do a quick fade to our layer so it doesn't just pop into the scene. So with the clean plate layer selected, let's press I on the keyboard to navigate to the layer's endpoint. Pressing page down will allow us to move frame by frame down the timeline. Let's move a few frames down the timeline to set an opacity keyframe. Now pressing I again to go to the endpoint, let's change the opacity down to zero to fade down the layer. As a final touch, you could add a hint of noise to the clean plate to make it appear as though it was real moving footage. But in this case, I honestly don't think it's necessary. On your own projects, especially if there's low light or your footage is noisy, you won't want to bypass this step. Well, there you go. A solid solution to an otherwise difficult tracking problem. Thanks to Mocha AE and a little ingenuity. And now that you've been playing with this dead fish footage, I'm sure you'll want to stop by my site and check out the cheese ball video in its entirety. It makes a whole lot more sense when you see the whole thing. I'm not picking on the video, by the way. That's what Luke decided to name the fish. Cheese ball. 
Anyway, I hope you found something in this tutorial that you can apply to your own work, and that you've hopefully seen that Mocha AE is more than a one-shot screen replacement wonder, even if it is really good at that. So until next time, I'm Carl Larson for creativecow.net.